What up brothers, it's Club King returning for a new review to my channel. This is the uh, first of two reviews that's sponsored by Dean Knight, good friend of mine in the community has lent me these two figures. I've got some time on my hands this week, um, I said some forced time on my hands this week and I thought I'd better uh, catch up on my reviews before anything new comes in. So as you can see the figure in front of you is the Eric Draven figure from The Crow. I'll start off as well by saying it is Dean Knight's and he will uh, make a guest appearance <laughs> actually twice on this video so look out for him. He will score up the packaging and also I think he tried to do the packaging in Clipper King style and I don't know if that were a fail or if it was just funny as fuck but that will be on end at review. So yeah, I sent him a few figures down a couple of months since to uh, review and do some showcases on and he did and when he sent the package back it included the Crow figure and the Jim Gordon from uh, the Dark Knight trilogy so this will be the first and I'll crack straight on to Jim Gordon get him done so I can get him sent back to the brother so massive shout out to him I will also go on and explain that I saw this film when it first come out and I've got to say I didn't love it in fact I'll be honest and say I didn't like it at all weren't my cup of tea um, and I will also say I think the film only did well or sort of even gets mentioned now through a sycophantic nature because uh, Brandon Lee died during the making of it so that is my thoughts and I will say I've told you in other reviews I do go back and check on the source material I'll go back and watch the film again or read up on this I pretty much went back and I watched a few trailers on YouTube just to see what the likeness were doing and also to refresh myself with what happened in the film that were all I saw the trailers it's not a film I would ever watch again, if I'm honest, because when I watched it, I remember being pretty bored from it. I don't know if I just didn't understand it or if the undead or the sort of, I don't know, I don't know what you would class it as. I would call it a supernatural revenge film. It just didn't do it for me. I think the effects were very of that time and from what I saw, haven't aged that well either. So that would be my thoughts on the uh, figure. I were actually as well going to introduce this uh, review as Sting from uh, the WCW Wrestling, but I thought, no, that'd just be a cheap laugh. But you can see that I think this obviously with the original look and then Sting took this look. Um, so, yeah. Source material for me, I don't know what I would score it. I would just say because the source material was so weak to me, that stopped me from buying the figure. Now... I probably wouldn't have lost no sleep if I'd never seen the figure, but I will also say that now I have seen the figure, I'm very, very impressed by it on a lot of different categories. So those scores will be, uh, they'll become clear. But like I said, because it's not a uh, massive influence on me, I'm only giving the source material a two out of five. Now rolling on to uh, Dean's first clip, he's going to score up the packaging. I'm not so whether I agree with him or not because I haven't seen it in hand, but uh, I respect his opinion enough to give you the score on that. Before we do join Dean, I will just say uh, the pose. Pretty much gone for the um, sort of the standard pose for this figure, the hands out to the side, sort of crow pose. Just a little twist on it. I did get the um, movement through the coat. I did only have him with one foot down. So sort of a, a crow style pose, but with like a bit of karate kid crane thrown in with the uh, front leg forward and up sort of thing as if he's about to leap or if he's about to... Uh, take a huge stride forward so I just thought I'd explain the pose I will say as well I'm not going to have many problems posing this bad boy because it is very very posable so like I said stick with me because I will get plenty of poses for you but for now let's join Uncle Dean right so the box for the crow is very nicely presented it is basically the same movie poster that I used to have many years ago in my bedroom and it was exactly this basically it just didn't have the special edition sticker from hot toys or the hot toys logo on there or the movie masterpiece but it did have that this and surrounded by the back so yeah it's basically the movie poster transformed into the front cover of the box you got some kind of uh, crow feather effect going on here sometimes it's not very obvious that it is crow feathers because you get these kind of sections like that where it just looks a little bit random uh, but it's nice that it's got a texture to it, catches the light and you see uh, the effect depending on how the light's hitting it. You see that? Very nice. Um, 
quite a lot of it is a very smooth texture and then you'll get see there you get some more streaks of rough yeah, so that's that um, underneath on top the side more crow feathers and underneath you've got the, uh, the cool little addition they gave for maybe display and photography purposes you got the window that he was uh, chucked out of originally and the window that when he came back and he sort of goes to jump out and then does his little uh, swinging back in again thing all very dramatic uh, there you go inside clamshell lots of plastic to house everything keep it all safe uh, let's see and we got more I haven't actually seen this before I never looked uh, what's that the lights bouncing off it a bit I think that's more crow feather effect but without the texture just smooth but it is does appear to be a crow wing and then you've got your uh, credits on the back that's upside down that's not very good <laughs> uh, you can pause this if you so desire to find out who was responsible for the making of the figure again don't go eating any of your crow bits so that's it I will give the crow box a nice it was cool uh, that it came with this I like I wish all Hot Toys figures came with a backdrop a cardboard display background like a scene from the film just as an option about this size this tall that wide come with every figure just as an option for photographers and people who just like to display their figures in front of a backdrop it really does help prime case of that would be the upcoming uh, one six scale Hot Toys Robocop that comes with a chair Apparently it doesn't come with a background. Think how weird it's going to look for Robocop sitting in a chair with no background behind him. Just in someone's display cabinet with a wall behind it, or a mirror, or white or black, whatever it's going to be. If it's not in front of a scene from the film, like surrounded by the, you know, the laboratory or wherever you'd call uh, Robocop HQ where he goes to recharge his batteries. The fact that they don't seem to be given a background with that chair option for the Robocop figure seems completely like a missed opportunity and kind of pointless given the chair you know, without a backdrop. But there you go. I think all figures should come with a backdrop option. It couldn't be that expensive to include that in a Hot Toys figure. I mean, it probably cost more to do like a pair of hands than it would to do uh, it's just a nice print out of a background from the movie. DX13 could have done with a nice uh, little background steel mill with the lava or whatever you want to call it, the molten uh, metal or whatever. Pro, anyway, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5 because I think they did a great job with the design. It's very true to the movie. It does serve its purpose. Nice little inclusion here of the window. Everything's packed up so safely inside. Nice and small. The box isn't too big. It does its job. 4 out of 5. Very nice. Thanks to uh, Uncle Dean there for a score on packaging. Like I say, he's given it a uh, 4 out of 5. And I think I would have agreed if I'm honest. But like I said, I trust him enough to go along with his score. So anyway, moving on to likeness. As you can see, I've changed up the pose, gone with the guitar. You're getting fucking mental with yourself here. Look at him. Getting a little twist. Gone all Prince, I think. He's fucking firing his thumb straight down them strings. Oof, beautiful. Look at that. That is a lovely pose, I've got to say. Look at it, every angle. It's not, not out of place in any angle. Got it looking picturesque. Lovely. If you've got some, cro if you've got your crows at home, have a go at that one. It's a nice one. Anyway, I'll stop bullshitting and crack onto likeness. Right, me initial thoughts on this were fucking maniac smile and horse teeth. If I'm honest, which pretty much were like everybody else's response. I think I thought on the pictures that the makeup didn't look as well done as the Joker's makeup. Um, and I weren't completely sure that it looked like Brandon Lee. I'll get onto the air in a minute. Now, what I will say is, in hand, the makeup is a lot more subtle than the Joker makeup and a lot more precise, I think I would say. So the makeup in hand is better than the pictures. I would say I do like the eyes. I think I've said before on certain sculpts with the eye position, it changes the expression whether you till or rotate the head or dip the head or whatever. And I think that is the case as well with this. I will say as well, it is the eyes and particularly the nose that lead me to believe that uh, Brendan Lee is in there. Or Brandon Lee. I keep saying it wrong. Don't know why I said Brendan. I think I'm thinking of Brendan Rogers, Liverpool manager. So, yeah, you do see him in there in hand. Like I said, the... Uh, 
paintwork that represents the makeup is really good. Now, the only, the only thing that I still agree with is the teeth, I think. They're a little bit too white and therefore too fake. And I think they're a little bit... This is really fucking niggly. But they're a Nats bollock, a bit too far forward for me. They look too like they're protruding from his lips. They're not set back enough as teeth would be. Now, if I give, sort of give an example of what I mean. Now, I think you could do something about that, but obviously on a figure that's not mine, I'm not going to start fucking about with paintwork and black washers and shit like that. That's down to the person who owns the figure to do. But I think to give the appearance that them teeth were deeper set or more realistic, I think I would go something like I did on the Wolverine. Because I think that the darkened black wash sort of in the mouth sort of makes the teeth look like the deeper set. I think... See, Wolverine, when it came, stock, the stock Wolverine, I don't think the teeth were as, as prominent as they are on the Crow. And I don't know, the fact that you have only got one head sculpt means you're pretty much stuck with it. So I don't know. I don't know if it kills the, the sculpt. It don't kill the sculpt. It's not that bad. But I think it doesn't help the sculpt. Where it could have been awesome. I just think they made the teeth too white and too prominent. That's just my opinion. And obviously, because the camera's right up into his face, it's going to look even more so when you, uh, when you watch it on video. I'm going to just try a little experiment here. From there, I think the teeth look fucking very, very obvious. But now if I rotate up, or try to give the illusion that I'm dipping his head, when it gets to somewhere there, I think it looks pretty good. That is, I would always have his head dipped forward so that you're in line of his eyes sort of thing, because that way, the angle of the mouth makes the teeth look less obvious. That is what I would say. Another thing, I'm a massive fan of Sculpted Air. I know others don't like it, and... I will qualify that by saying certain figures I've seen, uh, I don't know who's done them, I can't remember the name, but certain people will put air on fucking everything. Certain figures, Superman, massive no-no. Superman's air is pretty much sculpted on the real version. It hardly moves, so why put real air on it? Um, what other one I saw? Luke Skywalker, another massive no-no. I think his hair is too light, so it just looks matted up with glue. So um, if that's what you want to do, then fair enough. But I'm not a massive fan of real hair. I would say a figure I have seen that's got real hair is the Joker figure that uh, Cosy 80 lent Dean Knight. I think that is one of the standout aired figures. Obviously, Black Widow and Catwoman aside, because they really have good hair as well. I think that although I prefer sculpted hair, I think that real air might have done this figure some favours because you would sort of be able to slightly position the air to show motion, so to speak. Like, now, nah, if he was spinning round, this section of air here would waft it back, wouldn't it? And then this section would come round like his coat swinging round. The same, the same momentum would bring his air round. So um, it might have worked on a figure like this, but uh, they didn't. The air is sculpted really well. I think it is long enough and I think it is full enough. So the only downside really for the sculpt for me is the teeth. Um, they could have had this sculpt and then had another, but they never. So like I said, the fact that that's what it came with, that's what you're stuck with. Mm. See, it's a pisser because I see Brandon Lee in there and the paint is really good. <sighs> but I'm still going to give the likeness a four out of five, which is... To be honest, I was thinking about giving it a three, but then I would have been suggesting that it doesn't look like who it's supposed to, and it does. So, yeah, the likeness, like I said, I'm giving it a four out of five, kind of generous. But I will say, I do like that pose because it's balanced, and it's fucking got momentum. It's beautiful. Even closer pose. Not just, not just arms and legs and head and that. Clothes and everything. Guitars, pulling it back and... Twatting his thumb down them strings. Like, Bring! Beautiful! Rolling on to outfit. And I've got to say, as soon as I took this out of packaging, I felt the quality of it and sort of the suppleness of the majority of it. I thought, oh yeah, I like that. I like how they've done it. I think when I saw the pictures, 
what I'd assume they'd done, they have done. So are the, the fixed gauntlet sections. I'm glad they did that because it's don't piss you off and keep sliding backwards and forwards. The fact that the taping around his midsection is attached to sort of his undershirt. Um, the trousers are not stiff and restrictive. And again, the tape's fixed onto the trouser with the um, sort of the rope wrapped round and then down to his boots. Really like them. Fucking awesome. They look a little bit like the whiplash boots. And also, I used to have some boots like that myself. And I uh, I never wore tongue down as much as that, but I do like what they've done. And I like the fact that it, the uh, leg of the trouser stays in the boot. And the, because of the boots open at front, there's still really good articulation in the ankle. I think they've done a really good job. The button work on the uh, front of the trousers, I think is really good. You can see they've got the uh, metal studs on with the stars on it. It's moving up, kind of like just a, a lycra long sleeve t-shirt, again with the wrappings on. Beautiful. Don't restrict the articulation at all, and I like that. It does uh, represent the movie really well. Look at that, it's got some javelin action going on. Some fucking javelin. Let's have a look from above. Oof, lovely. Nice. And then obviously, our talking outfit, we've got to talk the uh, leather trench coat. Really, really well done. To compare it to something, I would sort of put it somewhere between... The Carlito jacket, if anybody's got the uh, Carlito Brigante from Blitzway, or the um, art figures, what, what it now? I think it was called the Avenger, it was actually the Tom Jane Punisher. The long trench coat he had is very similar to that. It is pleather, and it has got uh, sort of battle damage or wear and tear on it. Really good. See the uh, holes that dug her right through it, moving around. Slash there, which obviously then would be on his shoulder over there. Really well done. The belt tied at the back. Nice. The uh, the key thing with this is it's wired all the way around the bottom edge, all the way up here, all the way around here, and around the collar. So you can pretty much go as mental as you want with it. You could do out, and I love out like that because it emphasizes my poses. So in a minute, when I see when you see him jumping, you're gonna see him. It's coat looking pretty fly. So yeah, really, really nice, really strong point on this uh, figure. It's not massive. There's not massive detail in it, and it's not like a fucking work of engineering genius like the uh, the Zod figure. But in its own way, it's really well done. They could have easily fucked it up, to be honest. But I'm glad they never the. Uh, they did keep the figure really articulated by using supple materials and I do really like that about it. So to score it, it's a really, really easy 5 out of 5. Right, moving on to articulation. And imagine, if you will, that that's just not really Spider-Man's base. It's a some kind of cathedral or a church of some kind or whatever, leading up to a spire and right up to the... Uh, I don't know if that's a lightning conductor, if it's... Um, some kind of weather vane or whatever it is, but uh, it comes with it. It's like the very top of a church, I would say. I don't know what the fuck they're called. If somebody knows, put it in comments. He's pretty much wrapped around it. I mean, the lookout of it, city is looking for crime. I mean, wrapped around it. Beautiful. Like I said, just got that sort of stood on top of the air. And he's on the air. Again, no fucking picturesque, we said. And on his arm. He's got the crow. So that's what I've gone for there. Just pretty much to demonstrate that the articulation is is faultless, basically. It's, uh, the body is the slim true type, uh, pretty similar to the Luke Skywalker, I would say. Really articulated, loose in places, particularly this elbow, feels pretty loose and very stiff on that shoulder. Now I've experienced the amazing Spider-Man, so I fucking know how to be careful with your shoulder. But like I said, that one feels a little bit on stiff side, so handle with care if that's what you feel. Warm it up, loosen it off steadily, I would say, if this is your figure and you've just got it. The loose ones, sometimes, earlier on when you're holding that in the javelin thing, the weight of this 
we're sort of pulling that down that's how loose that is the legs are pretty much perfect got a really good bend on them as you can see it's pretty much crouched there good articulation through the ankles because the boots are open at the front uh, through the crunch the waist everywhere lower articulation on the neck not at the top of the uh, neck sculpt which is good because it uh, don't give you the ugly line so yep really good hands pop on and off really nice because they are the soft rubber ones so all in all a really good body like i said loose in places tight in others but when you can pretty much pose a figure however you can imagine you've got to give the articulation a uh, a really high score and i have done with this figure giving it a five out of five all right Rolling on to extras, and this will probably be the uh, last poll because I'll do the value here as well and uh, sum it up, and then I'll cut to Dean Knight being Clipper King or trying his best. <laughs> but to show you the pose, I'm gliding down, following the crow, nice and tucked up, the coat flapping behind. Fucking job well done, Uncle Clipper. No wonder they go fucking mental for you, pal, when you've got to put a pause on your channel so you can clear shit down. No wonder fucking fans go mental, because how can they go a day without seeing beautiful poses like that? It's fucking no wonder you deserve it. So, yeah, look at that. Get some, get some fucking screenshots of that. Let me hold camera still for you. That's it now. Pause your computer, get some fucking snaps of that. Get them up on Sideshow Freaks and fucking pose it here for you. Beautiful, look at that. Choof, choof in hell. Anyway, what's he bring? He brings the crow, which, don't know, no articulation on it. It pretty much reminds me, do you remember that uh, motorized falcon that the falcon of predator brought? Pretty much that on a, that used to perch on his shoulder kind of thing, which, I don't know, kind of an afterthought. I get the feeling with this, the wings won't bend. I suppose if you warmed them right up, you could sort of, Put a, see this one's got more of a kink in it than this one has, that's pretty smooth, that one's like got a kink. I suppose you could warm it up and position them a bit more how you wanted to, but I don't know if you would care that much. Pretty much got the uh, translucent pole that sticks up its arse, and then it's weighted at the bottom. I understand why they put it in, but they could have put a little bit more into it, with a case that they can like slide out the wings and then put on a section that looks like folded up wings, so he's actually... This is actually standing there because when you put it on his shoulder it just or put it around him it didn't look natural because it's flying constantly you want it in a perch position i suppose so they could have put you a second crow in as well whatever they didn't so it is what it is you like it or you don't i just think it's a bit of an afterthought moving down you get the uh, generic hot toy stand which i think every figure should bring obviously got the uh, graphics on that you would expect Holds the figure really well, again as you would expect, but where some figures I don't understand why would bring a, a flying style pose, uh, pole, this one doesn't. So I've had to use the new goblin stand to get a couple of the poses. I think, um, like I said, just the option, are the dynamic stands that expensive that they can't include one on certain figures? Mm, they'll probably say yeah, because then they want you to go out and spend like 30, 40 quid, whatever they are, to buy the stand to be able to get that. I just think if the figure could use it, then they should put it in. But anyway, moving on to the hands. You've got the spread hands on, which are my favourite hands on this figure. Moving down, you've got the fisted hands, which I don't think I've used at all. And then you've got the hands for holding. I will say as well at this point, this is all Dean sent me. So whether it brings something else and yours has got something that this hasn't got, I don't know. Dean might have forgot something, but I'm reviewing what I've got. So yeah, the fisted hands, got the hands for holding stuff namely this and the guitar before i get onto those i will say the hands to me uh, i don't know i've said this before if an item brings an accessory you should have an, a set of hands that will pose with it or will hold it or whatever now i've seen the elvis figure from enter bay and i've seen the uh, saran kim Jimi hendrix figure both figures bring an hand that would pose sort of holding the cords and then an hand with a plectrum in or whatever this one doesn't and i can't fucking understand why because you're pretty much holding the strings with this hand which is not the best if i'm honest because you're pretty much with the underside of the hand you're squashing the uh, strings on the guitar 
and this one I suppose you could use it with his thumb touching the string I went with that hand which again it makes do but it's not as accurate looking as the Elvis figure and the Jimi Hendrix one looked that I saw so again another set of hands just specifically for the guitar would have been nice this spire or steeple or I forgot what the fucking call I think it's a spire or weather vane I don't know I can't remember he obviously uses a weapon in the film I don't remember that scene but it is there uh, it's nicely done well sculpted and well painted it looks very metallic although it is plastic so yeah nice touch obviously it's some relevance to the film I just don't remember it the instruction manual where I don't think you would really need it because it's basically just saying how to swap the hands on that the gauntlets are fixed and how to put the pole up the bird's arse and if any of you boys out there don't know how to stick your pole in a bird's arse yet then you're obviously underage so the guitar nah <sighs> fuck it if you've not seen a one six scale guitar before you're going to be happy when you see this because you're going to think oh it's got real strings it looks good and blah 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 and so on and so forth it's got the strap and it looks accurate I understand that it's only accurate to certain parts of the film although I would never know that in a million years because like I said I'm not I'm not that familiar with the film so some would say yeah it's in this part of the film but not in others I don't know I couldn't argue that point so I'm not to not harp on it I would say I've seen other guitars again the Elvis guitar were fucking so much better than this one, it's untrue. The two Jimi Hendrix guitars, fair enough, they go for like $200 each or whatever, are so much better than this. This one is just, I don't know, just plastic sculpted. It's okay, it serves a purpose, but like I said, with an experienced reviewer's head on, I've seen better guitars, so it's hard for me not to frown on it sort of thing. I will say as well, it's a fucking fingerprint magnet like you would never know. You can hardly touch it without leaving your fucking prints on it and I'm not putting white gloves on to review any fucking figure so like I said it is what it is I'm glad again they included it but again it's got a cheap feel about it so that is pretty much the extras they didn't include another head which I think they could have done the outfit is what it is and it's really good what else could they include the stand I suppose um, nothing else I can really another set of hands uh, specifically for the guitar but they didn't put that in so I don't know I think I think they thought to themselves what else could we put in and they probably thought an head sculpt and they're like well fuck that no because we've given the characteristic look anyway so what else shall we put in they come back and say well we'll put him guitar in and we'll put him this in and that'll do sort of thing so it is pretty bog standard but when you ask what is it really missing you could say the head a dynamic stand, another set of hands, blah blah blah. And I'm only really marking the guitar down because I've seen other guitars. So if you if you were new to the one six guitar, you would be really impressed with this. So it's a funny one. I'm I've wrote down a four out of five, and I think that's a really really generous four out of five. But that was my initial thought reviewing from a newcomer's point of view. So that is what I'm going to give it a four out of five on extras. Value, again, I can't give you the value because this figure's been lent to me. I don't know what Dean paid for it, and I don't know what it went for retail. I think it is a figure, what I would consider a base level figure. So, again, no extra head. It's not from a, a license that's going to attract a lot of attention. I would think I could go on to eBay or talk to Anthony or talk to a ebay seller or maybe ask around in uk and i would think i could pick one of these up for somewhere around 120 i would think which for that you're getting a good figure for the money it does pose really well and i do like that a good posing figure gets a lot of fucking credit in my collection the fact that i don't like the film pretty much rules that out for me because people would tell why you bought the crow figure i'm like mm, i don't know because i fucking hate the film sort of thing so i don't know that i would do that but what i would say is i have had fun and i'm really impressed seeing it in hand so i'm going to go straight down the line with the value because i think it's a low price figure and i think it will always stay a pretty low price figure i could be totally fucking wrong with that as well because it could do what blade did and went through the roof although i will say Blade were a lot cooler film and Blade brings a shitload of accessories so maybe it won't do what Blade did. Um, 
I will say though, I'm looking at this uh, through the viewfinder and I'm fucking loving that pose. Uh, anyway, the overall score is a 27 and a possible 35, which like I said before, a lot of figures seem to get that. I think it's because I deduct on certain on certain categories, but not others, so they're all ending up around 27. So that would be what I would consider an average score, and that's what he's got. So all I can do now is thank Dean for letting me see it. And uh, I'm going to cut to him now. I will say, just to give you a bit of background information on this, when I had, when I realised he'd not sent the boxers and I wanted to do a full review on him, I said, Dean, do you mind filming me, uh, your version of me reviewing a box sort of thing, so I can cut that into the thing and have you as a special guest appearance sort of thing? And he was like, yeah. So he sent me three clips. The straight version of the uh, Jim Gordon clip, the straight version of this packaging clip, and then he did this a crow version of the packaging in Clipper King style. And I will just say, <laughs> I'm from fucking Yorkshire, Dean. I'm not from Newcastle. I'm not from fucking Ireland. And I'm not from fucking West Country. So wherever these accents come from, I will never know. But anyway, check it out. Have a laugh. But for now, this is Clipper King Brothers, and I'm out of here. Right, non up packaging. We've got a picture of Eric Jave and the crow walking into like a shop because he's run out of tea bags and he's come get himself some tea bags, man. Uh, he's, he's begging us, man. He's begging us. Uh, he's got his uh, like <laughs> feather effect here. It might be a feather, might be poo. I'm not sure. It doesn't really look like a feather to me. That just looks like someone smeared a big giant thumb print, like a massive thumb. Like my thumb was that big and just went bleh put it on the box and now you've got thumb prints all over it but that one sort of looks like a wing the rest of it looks like shite uh you got eric draven the crow the picture of top bird picture of uh crow coming in from the shop saying do you have any tetley tea bags and they say no we've only got pg tips he says that's not good enough uh and then you got you can pause all this man you can have a look at who's responsible for it don't eat your hot toys because you will choke and die i've gone irish now ah shite uh Hang on a minute now, let me just open this up for you so you can get a good look inside and see what's going on there. Ah, feck it, I can't do it with one hand. Let me put a cheeky little pause in here and carry on with that. Right, so I've taken off the top lid and you've got basically what you've got here, man, you've got a, a revealed window from like the scene in the film, man, when he jumped out and he was like getting all upset because he's thinking back to when he got murdered and that. And he jumped out and he, he's like, fuck it, I don't know what, you know, don't know what to do. Uh, so he just held on to the top right and just done a little flip and then came back in, man. The little cat was running around and it was, me it was mental, man, it's mental. Uh, but there's blood on the glass there, there's blood from where he cut his hand and he's and he's fell out the window, but he didn't fall because he, he fell the first time and he died. But then he came back and he, he went to do it again, but then he changed his mind and he thought, no, I'm going to stay and I'm going to kill those bad fuckers who, who, who hurt me and messed up my girlfriend, ruined my whole thing. It was meant to be getting married. Absolute bollocks um take this out and it will reveal a whole lot of clear plastic and um stuff inside here god this is why i don't do these kind of videos it's not gonna happen let me just put cheeky little paws in again here man and we'll come back <laughs>